Hey everyone, welcome to Simply EDU. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to get a 36 on the ACT. Now, this video is divided into four sections. First, I'm going to talk about my prep and really my experience of the test. Then I'm going to go into a general overview of the exam. And after that, I'm going to talk about some of my tips on how to tackle each section of the test. And finally, I'm going to talk about what I think an optimal study strategy would look like. So for starters, into my experience, I took the test during February of my sophomore year and I got a 36 in all four of the sections. Now, to go into the content that I knew, I was just starting pre-cal in school, and so I knew most of the math in the test. As for the other sections, you don't really need to know much content as it's more about reading and understanding. Now, the way that I actually prepped is that the week before my exam, due to weather, we had a week off of school. And so each day of that week off, I took a practice test, which came out to nine total, and then the day before my official test, I took one more practice test, which came out to 10 total practice tests. Now, I really don't recommend prepping like this. I only did it this way because I was kind of in a rush. And I think there's definitely a much better way to go about this, which I'll get into later in this video. Next up, for a general overview of the exam, the test has four sections, English, Math, Reading, and Science. Now, the English section is very similar to the old SAT's writing section, and it's 75 questions in 45 minutes. Now, compared to the other sections, this is the worst question a minute ratio. However, I would say that it's the least fast paced section on the test because once you get familiar with the question types, it's really easy to answer the questions quickly and move on. Next is the math section. Now, this is 60 questions in 60 minutes. You get a calculator for the full test and the content goes all the way up to pre-cal. Now, already on its own, one minute per question is pretty fast. But if you're not familiar with the different question types that are asked, it gets really hard to finish this on time. And so that leads me to an important point. For the ACT, it's very important that you take practice tests when you're prepping. Because from test to test, the question types are very similar. And so just by getting familiar with those, it gets really easy to score high on the actual exam. After that comes the reading section, which is 40 minutes and 35 questions. There's four passages and 10 questions per passage. After that comes science, which is also 40 minutes and 35 questions. This time there's like six to seven passages, and for both reading and science, these are the hardest to finish on time. But hopefully by listening to the tips that I'll give later in this video, you'll be able to finish these on time. First off, we have the English section. Now, the two main things to focus on here are concision and precision. Concision means that, given that all the answer choices are grammatically correct and fit in the context, pick the choice that's the shortest and still gives off the same idea. Precision means to pick what's grammatically correct. Now, this varies from question to question, but usually this can be things like vocab, punctuation, subject verb agreement, correct tense, passive versus aggressive voice, and sometimes understanding the main purpose or idea of a passage. Now, I know this sounds like a lot, but I'll make videos in the future showing what this looks like in practice. Speaking of which, if you have any particular questions, then send a question number and the link to the test in the comments below. Alternatively, you can do the same thing or send a picture of the question to my Instagram, TikTok, or Gmail, all of which will be linked below in the description. Now, as for some things to improve, obviously the main thing is to take practice tests, but also read books and magazines, as this can help you to learn a lot of vocab and as well as you can see different sentence structures in order to understand the best way that certain sentences should be constructed and the way that certain words should be used in context. So next up is the math section. So next up is the math section. Now for this one, the most important thing is just to know the content and you can usually do this through school. However, I will be making a lot of videos on this and so hopefully you can learn a lot of the content that way. Now a main strategy for answering the question in this section is to just plug in the answer. So for instance, if a question gives you a system of equations and asks you to find x or y, then and the answer choices give you the coordinates x and y, then you can plug those back into the equations to see which one makes which values of x and y make the equations hold true. And you have a calculator to help you do that, so that makes these questions very easy to go through. And so, as I said earlier, this section is very fast paced, and it gets harder from question one to question 60. So actually near the end is where you start to see a lot of that pre-cal and the questions that really take a lot of thinking. And this gives rise to two different ways to do the test. Either A, you can go in normal order from one to 60, or you can do it in reverse order, from 60 to 1. Now, if you're new to the test and don't know all the content, then I would say you should go in normal order, 
because that way all the questions that you do know how to answer you get answered and you can get a maximal score that way however if you're very comfortable with the test and you do know all the content then you can try going in reverse order because that makes sure that you get all the hard questions knocked out already and then you'll be very equipped to go through all the questions at the beginning I would still recommend going in normal order and then skipping all the questions that seem like they'll take too much time. Because the important thing is to maintain a flow. And you don't want that flow to get interrupted, as that flow is what helps you to get questions answered quickly. So again, it is up to you on what you think you should do. And so that's why I would say it's important to take practice tests, because you can figure out how you personally should take the test. So next up is the reading section. Now, this one is super fast paced because already it's pretty close to one minute per question. When you factor that you have to actually read the passage as well, then it's just really, really fast. And so I would say that compared to the old paper SAT, it's easier, but it's definitely harder than the digital SAT. Because a lot of the time you can find the answer for a question directly in the passage, but it's still going to take some reading as compared to the digital SAT, which doesn't really take all that much effort. Now, just like the math section, there's two ways that you could tackle these passages. Either A, you could read the questions first, then read the passage, and then go back to the questions, or you could read the passage first and then go to the questions. I personally recommend going to, reading the full passage and then going to the questions, because the idea behind questions first is that you know what you're looking for before taking the, reading the passage. However, I would say that it's pretty hard to remember all the questions that you're supposed to do before going through it. You, uh, you end up wasting time by reading the, reading the questions and then going back to the passage. Instead, by reading the passage first and taking time to thoroughly understand it, you'll be able to answer all the questions and especially the abstract ones like what's the main idea or what's the purpose. Now, one other thing I noticed is that always for me, the first passage that I did is the one that took the longest, regardless of which one it was. But especially if I did like humanities or social science, I'd sometimes spend like 14 or 16 minutes on it, which is nearly half the total time of the test. And so that leads me to say that you should try doing the easiest passage first, because that way that this whole extra time tax is taken off. Okay, so, so what this meant for me is that I would do the science passage first. However, if the science passage was doubled, then I would go do the prose fiction first. But if the prose fiction had complex vocab or some weird writing style, then I'd go do social science first. Also, for double passages, what I would do is read the first passage, then answer the questions for the first passage, then read the second passage, then the questions for the second passage, and then do the combined questions at the end. Finally, we have the science section. So you actually don't need to know a lot of science for this section. A good background knowledge does help, but in the end, you don't need to have taken classes like AP Bio or Physics C to get a good score on this section. Because in the end, most of the questions are asking you to analyze a graph or a table, or read a passage or procedure. So just like for reading, for me, the first passage that I did always took me a very long time. And so I would usually do the graph or the table passages first. And my strategy for tackling these passages is a little unorthodox. So whenever I would start one of these passages, I would first read the intro and then just the axes for each of the graphs or tables. And then I would go to the questions. And then when I'm reading each of these questions, when I see what it's about, because I've already read the axes, I already know which graph it's referencing so I can go back to it and answer the questions accordingly. If it does ask me about the passage or a procedure, then I'd go back and read the according passage and procedure. The reason for this is that they usually don't ask you about all three of the procedures. And so if you read all of them and take the time to understand them, you're just wasting time. So it's better to just only skim that and then be able to skim the graphs and be able to get the trends out of that like that. Also, I do have a strategy for the multiple perspectives passage. This is the one that I always, I would always say for the end. And the way I would do this is that if you really are low on time, just read the first one alone and then the last two sentences of the second and the third one. The reason for that is that usually they would give you the same passage for the first, second, and third perspective, and they would only make the differences in the very last two or, th two or three sentences of each passage. And so by just reading the first one of the last sentences of the second and third one, you can maybe save time. But I wouldn't recommend always doing this because sometimes they do give you a little bit of extra reasoning within each of the passages. And so only do this final strategy if you're really low on time. So. Now I'm going to get into what I think is the optimal way to prep for the test. So the most important thing to do is to use the official book given by the ACT company. I put the picture of the most recent edition here on this slide. 
I use this book for the six practice tests that I took. And not only does it give you six tests given by the company, but it also does give you extra content explanations and other things. And so it's very important that you get this book. Also, note that you don't need to get the latest edition of the book, as they usually don't change much from year to year, but I do recommend getting it if you can. Now, as for how I think you should prep, I say that you should practice one section on each day of the week. So let's say math Monday, English Tuesday, science Wednesday, reading Thursday. And then take a practice test on the weekends, and then throughout the week, analyze each of your mistakes, write down why you got it wrong, and make a plan for how you're going to not make that mistake in the future. And of course, spread this out over more than just one week. That's how you can get 36 in the ACT. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe down below. Thanks for watching.